Hello, my name is Valerie Chen and I will be talking about the history of watercolor and how to draw a picture with watercolor. History of watercolor. Watercolor allows the white of the paper to show through, providing enhanced luminosity, a feeling of light superior to that of other paints. The more water in the wash of pigment, the more lighter the light of the surface comes through. Primitive humans applied water-based pigments with fingers, sticks, and whatever was naturally available. Their works can be seen in prehistoric cave paintings. These paintings were sometimes drawn with ash, earth, minerals, and water. The Egyptians used water-based paints to letter and paint on papyrus paper, as well as decorate tombs and public spaces. The ancient Chinese also have a grand tradition of watercolor painted on silk and later on handmade papers. The Japanese soon followed their lead. Techniques blossomed and evolved with the use of papers. Hey guys, I'm Jack and I'll be going over how to get started with watercolor, more specifically about what materials you're going to want to purchase. So the three most important things you're going to want is good paper, brushes, and pigments. Watercolor paper is thicker and equipped to hold onto fluids better than any other paper. And the ideal weight is 300 grams per square meter. And there's three variations, rough, cold press, and hot press, where a rough is good for more texturing, cold press for blending, and a hot press for finer details. For brushes, the shape variations include round, flat, filbert, liner, and mop, just to list a few, where each brush shape is crafted to be good at creating specific kinds of brush strokes. So for example, flat brushes are best for creating straight, squarey lines. I recommend you get a set of round brushes in a variety of sizes for starters, because round brushes allow you to control the size of the brush strokes much more easily. Um, for pigments, you can get them in pans, tubes, or liquids. Uh, most people are most probably familiar with the pan shape, which is best for starters, but some pros of using the other two is that tubes are uh, less messy to work with and liquids tend to have really vibrant and concentrated pigment. Hello everybody, my name is Grace and I'll be showing you how to take care of your watercolors, which will make them easier to work with. When you use a palette for an extended period of time, it will likely get very dirty and colors will start to mix. In order to remove unwanted colors from your pods, start by taking a clean paintbrush and soak it in water. Then, you can stir your paintbrush into your pot until unwanted colors start to lift up. As you can see, this red pot has a bit of black in mixed into it. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and stir it into the pot. And then dab it dry with a paper towel. So as you can see, the pod is cleaner than before. And then you can repeat the process with the rest of your palette. I will do this spot right here. And then you can repeat this for the rest of your palette. Okay, I hope this helps. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joelle and I'll be showing you how I paint with water colors. So I've had my line art finished and started to apply some of the paint. But the first step you want to do is you want to take your water and you want to wet the paints. You could either wet them directly with brush or spray water onto your paints as long as you apply some sort of water onto your pigments. Next, you want to apply the paint onto the paper. So here's like an example, like not too long ago, I just painted this so it's still wet. There is two techniques, it's wet on wet or wet on dry. Wet on wet is when you directly apply more paint onto the wet paint and it gives more of a um, diluted and spread out texture. And that's more for like your starting off layers but then you would like to apply wet paint onto dry paint after waiting for more of the finalized steps so that you could get a more finer detail onto your painting. So here I'm gonna just um, wait for this to dry so I could apply some more paint onto the layers. So I waited a bit now and I'm gonna start applying more paint onto the dry surface. So what it looks like is a finer detail really comes out and it won't like blend into the paint. So taking the brush, I'm just going to start going through and adding 
more like shadows and details based on where the light is coming through your painting. Alright, and here's the finalized painting. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed.